This conference will now be recorded. Everyone, welcome to Isha Trading Solutions. We will wait for two more minutes for others to join and then we'll start our discussion. Two minutes, we'll wait for others to join and then we'll start our discussion. Yes. Uh, thanks for joining. We'll wait, out, wait for two more minutes and then uh, uh, we'll start our discussion. Once again, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to Asia Training Solutions. So in our uh, previous week, what we did, we basically discussed about what are all the course content that we are going to learn as part of this course journey. So now we are going to start the first topic, which is actually the introduction part of it, performance engineering introduction. That is what we are going to start. So I encourage each and every one of you, uh, please stop me at any point of time, ask your questions, let the get the clarification and then we'll move on. So there is nothing like good question, bad question. Uh, please ask your question, whatever you feel. Uh, I mean, we did not understand any particular discussion that we are doing. Uh, we will have different examples and then we'll move on. Okay. So performance engineering introduction. So we know performance testing. Okay, what is performance testing? Checking the stability of the application under various workload. Okay, that is the performance testing. Okay, checking the stability of the application under various workload. Okay, that is performance testing. But performance testing basically what we are doing, we are checking the application performance and we are saying that there is a problem. Okay, say like response time problem, error problem, exception problem, whatever. Some error that we are reporting in the case of performance system. Performance engineering means next level. Okay, so you are not only going to say that there is a problem, you are going to say where is the problem or how to resolve it or you yourself can resolve it also. Okay, so so testing will only say that there is a problem but performance engineering is actually the next level i'm going to uh, uh, see the problem statement in a different level okay so, say an example uh, performance tester what they will do performance tester will say response time is so and so example uh, login transaction is actually taking 10 seconds our search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds like that. Performance testers will only say that there is a problem. But performance engineers, what they have to do? They have to say that 10 seconds response time or 15 seconds response time where it is actually taking. Is it actually the time that is actually spent in the application layer or in the database layer or even it is actually spending in the front end, okay, browser layer, or the problem is actually due to the infrastructure also. 
so so what we are going to do we are not only going to say that there is a problem we are going to say where is the problem how to resolve it what is your findings and observation what is your recommendation that is what we are going to do it in the engineering side engineering you are you are going to find the root cause of the problem or you are going to provide the recommendation to resolve the problem or you yourself can resolve the problem anything can be done okay so performance testing yes we know performance engineering it is the next level that we are going to do it because i i don't know how many performance testers are actually in this forum say like you are only doing testing say you are you are collecting the requirement and you are converting that requirement into a script and then you are doing load test stress test like that and then you are saying response time for the particular transaction is so and so if you are doing this activity alone i mean in the current situation the modern trend that is not the expectation from the performance testers you should do little more than that little more than that we have to do you cannot only say i will do testing and i will provide only numbers okay nowadays the trend is actually changing nowadays everybody is actually expecting what not only numbers the reason for the number also you have to provide that is what the engineering means that is what the engineering means you cannot only say that there is a problem response time high response time like that you cannot only say that reason alone you have to say little more than that little more than that and also you think like this say like your your experience level is actually moving from 8 years to 10 years or 10 years to 12 years or 12 years to 14 years like that your experience is actually moving means and still if you are saying what activity that you are doing yeah i am collecting the requirement i am doing the planning i am doing the scripting i am doing the execution like that if you are saying your manager or your your uh, customer what they will think you know this can be done by the four year experience or five year experience the guy what extra that you are doing that is what the question you will get it from your team if you are still saying i am 16 year experience or 17 year experience but still i am doing only testing i know how to do scripting i know how to do execution i will provide the report no that is not the expectation if you are growing in your career so that time only the importance of performance engineering is actually comes into picture you are going to say little more extra information along with your testing information okay so that time only the usage of uh, apm tool usage of profiling tool usage of infrastructure monitoring tool usage of client monitoring tool all those things are actually comes into picture all things are actually comes into the picture when you are started talking about performance engineering performance engineering you cannot only say i will do testing i will provide numbers that time what your customer or your manager will say this this task anyone can do this task anyone can do i want you to explore little more things and provide little more insight about the problem that is what the expectation from your manager or from the customer so that is a reason that is the reason we all are gathered here for the learning of performance engineering performance engineering you can ask me a question sir this can be done by the developer itself right why performance engineers are separately required actually saying yes in certain organization this activity is done by the developers only this activity is actually done by the developers only but there are uh, actually there are uh, uh, timeline pressure is actually with the developers if you think about the developers activity what they are doing they are interacting with the clients they are getting the design document and they are doing the development and they are doing the unit testing and they are giving the code to the integration testing if the integration testing team when they are raising any defect that defect they are fixing and then the code will reach the user acceptance testing that time they will uh, uh, raise the defect that also fixed by the developer 
even the developer will give the port to the performance testing team, security team, compatibility team. Everybody they are involved in this chain of reaction. So, what about the timeline for the developers? Developers are all the way busy. Developers are all the way busy, right from requirement gathering till the code reaching to the production. Every time they are busy. So, in that case, developer they can they cannot additionally spend the time in fixing this problem or fine tuning this thing or not. So, for that, there is a separate job role that is actually there to help them or to do partial uh, work of development. That that role is actually the performance engineer role. Performance engineer role. So, you are going to uh, understand digest the information and then you are going to fine tune the application performance you are going to fine tune the application performance that is what performance engineer they are going to do yes in certain organization still it is done by the developers only but most of the time developers are running behind time so they are not finding right time to do this kind of activity that is the reason there is a separate job role is there called performance engineer they will do these kind of a fine tuning activity, regular BAU work, I mean progression, regression testing, uh, giving code to individual testers, doing the deployment activity, everything only developers they are going to focus on. But the, the optimization, fine tuning, all those things, uh, performance engineer they will focus on. Okay, each organization they are following different different strategy, but most of the organization they are maintaining the separate job role for performance engineer and performance engineer only will do the optimization, fine tuning, all those things they will do. I will take a pass here, this. any question please? Yeah. So now, now we, we got the understand what performance engineering means. So, Engineering is nothing but you are going to resolve your performance problem, optimization, fine tuning, compression, minification, all those things we are going to do. Because our focus area is what? Our focus area is improve the application performance. Our focus area is what? Improve the application performance. That is the reason we are doing the performance engineering. Performance engineering. So, performance engineer focus area, now we got it. So, performance engineering focus area, now we got it. Because, so developers, what they will do, usually what developer, I mean, not all developers, most of the developers I'm saying. What developers they will do, you know, they will think the application should work, the functionality should work. That is what their main objective. They will think always what? They will think the functionality should work, the application should be up and running without having any problem. That is what mainly they will focus on. But they are actually what they have to do. They should also think about what? The stability of the application or the performance of the application. But initial part of the time what will happen? They are more focused on functionally making the application stable. When, uh, when integration testers, when they are raising defect or UAT tester, when they are raising the defect, their focus area is what? fixing all the defects and then make the application working fine without having any problem. That is what their primary focus area. That is what their primary focus area. But realistically speaking, what they have to focus on? They have to focus on performance of the application also. Okay. But many organizations, they are missing that process. Many organizations, they are missing that process. What process? Follow the standards what standard that we are going to follow when we are writing the code writing procedures okay so example i work for one of the organization okay there 100 developers were there 100 developers okay for that application for that particular application 100 developers were there okay so any new developer they are joining in the team okay any new developer they are joining in the team they don't have proper uh, documents to understand the entire application knowledge. They don't have procedure document or they don't have design document that are available to understand what is actually happening in the application. Okay. And there are 100 developers are there, right? So because of that, 
there is one more problem also the senior developers i mean the experienced developers you know they are not focused on what is actually happening with respect to the person who is actually newly joining in the team so a person who is actually newly joining in the team so so because of that they don't have any idea what the fresher developer they are doing similarly for the fresher developer what they are doing if i ask any silly question to my senior person whether they will think very bad about me or what they will think that i am not capable or what they will think that i am uh, i don't have the understanding about uh, code or what like that what they did you know they did not talk to the senior person to get the understanding of the complete application okay so either way it's a problem right senior person they did not talk to the junior person junior person they did not talk to the senior person so because of that what happened the the every code whatever developed by each and every developer you know nobody i mean nobody checked whether it is actually properly working or functionally working or performance wise working like that nobody verified it okay even even the junior developer uh, those guys you know whenever they are developing a, a new code they don't know the functionality right the the fresher developer they don't know the functionality what they usually do you know they'll write like this if condition meeting my code will work else my senior code will work okay if condition meeting my code will work else my senior code will work so like that they started applying lot of looping conditions and all conditional statements because of that what happened over the period of time that that application become like a garbage okay that application is actually performing very very slow lot of resource problem lot of performance issues everything started happening because of what developers they don't find time to do this kind of a procedures process actually saying in the leading companies like probably google facebook those com- google facebook or, or twitter those companies what they do they follow the standards their their way of writing code writing is actually standard they are not going to write any garbage code and all and also what they usually do end of the day everybody whatever the check in check out people are doing somebody will do the code review also code review okay somebody will do uh, uh, probably the senior person will do the code review so that they will easily identified the code developed by the junior person is actually following the standard or they are unnecessarily writing some junk code or what that they have to validate it that they have to regularly do it so so this uh, this uh, uh trending companies right like the google facebook twitter these companies you know they have process everything in place so because of that they are maintaining that standard but think about the other companies they don't follow the procedures and developers they don't have time to look into these things that time only performance engineers role is actually comes into picture performance engineer what their focus area fine tuning the application performance fine tuning the application performance if you take uh, the role of developer their responsibility is little different they are going to do uh, new code development they are going to do existing bug fixing like that lot of dependencies that are there with the developers but for the um, performance engineers the story is different for them the main focus area is what optimizing the application performance fine tuning the application performance that is what performance engineer they are going to focus on okay developers their focus area is different performance engineers their focus area is actually different so now we are going to learn about these concepts what concept performance engineering concept so that whenever in the near future when we are getting the opportunity that time we are going to use this knowledge say like you are doing testing on top of it we are going to uh, use this engineering knowledge and you are going to give little more insight about the problem statement root cause everything you are going to do it so performance engineering can be proactive or reactive okay performance engineering can be proactive or reactive okay but most of the time what is actually happening it is reactive only 
very very uh, i mean um, stable companies only they are doing the proactive uh, performance engineering proactive performance engineering means what then and there you are going to check code review or architectural review or whatever the uh, process that we are doing all those things they are going to proactively check it then and there they are trying to resolve the problem that is proactive performance engineering i mean there is a problem uh, you are going to identify early and then resolve it early and the impact is very very less okay the impact is very very less in the case of proactive performance engineering but most of the time that is not happening most of the time what is actually happening performance engineering activity what they are doing it is kind of a reactive process reactive process what is a reactive process problem is there they know the problem statement they know there is a resource utilization problem there is a db problem there is a application server problem there is a application logic problem there is a browser rendering problem like that they know the problem statement and then only they are doing the performance engineering that is reactive process okay reactive means what problem happened and then only you are getting the problem statement on top of it you are going to do the optimization that is a reactive process but reactive process sometimes it is actually uh, uh, lot of investment that is actually there in the case of reactive process. why because so now also i told you one sample uh, example right one application where under a developer are there that application age is actually 10 years application age is actually 10 years okay so if the application age is 10 year means look at the code the weightage of code that is actually available for the application and when you are trying to do the optimization, unification, compression, anything that you are trying to do, you need to touch that 10 year code base. 10 year code base which is very very risky and also so much of investment that is actually required. I mean it takes time and you need to have a lot of money invested for doing the optimization in the case of reactive phase. So that is the reason the best way is to implement it in the proactive way only. But most of the time, in the early times, customer they are not that serious or they are not taking uh, any uh, uh, proactive measures to uh, uh, resolve this kind of a problem. So instead, uh, what what is happening? They are they are uh, finding the problem and then only they are thinking about optimization and all, which is a reactive process. Most of the time, that is what is actually happening. If they are finding it in the early point of the time, the resolution can be easy. But if they are finding it in the later part of the application development, then ultimately it is going to be a huge investment to uh, resolve the problem. Huge investment to resolve the problem. So, so performance engineering can be proactive or reactive. But if it is proactive, very good. If it is reactive, the, the time, investment, effort will be very, very high in the case of reactive performance engineering. I'll take a pass here, guys. Any question, please? Yes, yeah. so introduction we got the understanding. We are going to learn about engineering uh, uh, concept. Engineering means what I told you. Now, slowly, we'll move to the next topic, which is actually the life cycle. Life cycle. So I told you before, I mean in the previous session also I told you the same thing. I mean any activity that we are doing, life cycle is actually involved. Any activity, development when you are doing, I mean application development when you are doing, SDLC you are going to do it. What you are going to do? SDLC. SDLC. So soft, software. Development lifecycle. That is the SDLC model. Even when you are doing normal testing, normal functional testing, when you are doing SDLC, you are going to do, which is a software testing lifecycle. Software testing lifecycle. Okay. So all all these days, maybe you guys are doing performance testing. Okay, any performance testers in this forum? Okay, Megesh, yeah. 
performance okay, testing okay. life cycle yeah correct ptlc ptlc very good ptlc performance testing life cycle so and, and the one that we are uh, going to learn is actually the pelc performance engineering life cycle performance engineering life cycle so why i am more focused on this life cycle so maybe uh, a example i mean uh, example if i'm if i'm attending any interview if i'm attending any interview okay say someone is actually asking hey saravanan uh, could you please brief yourself like that if somebody is asking the question actually saying those who are attending interview for them i'm saying actually for this question what i will say if if, this, if someone is asking this question what i usually say so I, hi i am saravanan i have so and so experience like that i say right next to what i will say so i have experience in collecting the nfrs non functional requirement from the customer basically in the nfr uh, concurrent user detail throughput detail environment related details or your uh, test data details all those things we are trying to collect it in the nfr times and once a nfr collected means i also do the test planning document preparation i have experience in preparing the test plan documentation because uh the test planning is very important we need to get the sign off from the client uh we have to say when the testing is actually st started what we are going to do in the testing how many scenarios how many test types when you are going to start the activity all those things i will do it in the test planning like that you will say the the step by step activities right that is actually what that is actually life cycle only performance testing life cycle only internally we are saying what are all the activities that we are doing correct right because you are going to say i have experience in collecting the requirement i have experience in preparing the planning document i have experience in doing the scripting i have experience in doing the execution i have experience in doing the reporting like that you are saying right actually internally it is actually what that is a life cycle activity performance testing life cycle only you are basically explaining indirectly that tell me about yourself means you are going to say these are the activities that i am doing right from requirement gathering test planning test design test execution reporting all those things you are going to explain to them so what the receiver will understand yes this guy is actually doing a wonderful performance testing activity because you are telling what life cycle only you are saying but you are covering your day to day activity your day to day activity similarly similarly in engineering side also you should definitely know what engineering life cycle performance engineering life cycle then only if somebody is asking what you are doing all these days what you are doing like that if somebody is asking internally what you will say that is again a performance engineering life cycle only that is performance engineering life cycle only but you are going to say as if you are doing the regular activity day in day out what are all the activity that you are doing like that you are going to explain to the interviewer okay so okay performance engineering life cycle we have to learn what i am going to do now i am going to explain this this life cycle i mean performance engineering life cycle kind of similar to sdlc software development life cycle okay because uh, i mean i just wanted to give that feel developers activity and performance engineers activity almost kind of a, a parallel activity right so so that is a reason i'm going to explain what, uh, what developers are doing and what performance engineers they are going to do it like that okay so first of all any activity i mean e even the developers i'm saying even the developers or the performance engineers anybody first first what they are going to do they are going to do the requirement gathering even the developer that is a first stage for the performance engineer also quite a similar activity right they they should also collect the requirement they should also collect the requirement 
so even uh, performance engineers what they will do they will think about something like system sizing and all i mean they have to forecast it they have to forecast it in the requirement gathering time itself what is your system sizing related information okay these many servers this is the configuration this is what we are doing this is all we are going to do all those things we are going to uh, uh, check in the requirement gathering time itself okay system sizing related information performance engineers they are going to understand it that moment that that uh, activity that you are going to do it so why why they are actually doing to arrive at the right number of resources to provide satisfactory performance to the end user that is the reason why they are why performance engineers they are doing all these kind of activity their focus area is what they wanted to provide a satisfactory performance to the end user they wanted to provide the satisfactory performance to the end user that is the reason actually they are doing this kind of a activity okay and they also think about something about response time that is a primary focus area right during the requirement gathering itself they have to think about yes the requirement is so and so that requirement how it is actually going to load what response time it is actually going to take that also they are going to understand and they are also think about what number of concurrent users they are also going to think about what number of concurrent user number of concurrent user that also they are going to think about in that and critical business flows okay business transaction level growth rate level storage requirement level everything performance engineers they will discuss understand in that layer in that life cycle layer what they are doing they are going to think about system sizing related resource utilization related response time related concurrent user related business transaction related how the growth will be this year is so and so next year is so and so how the data volume will be this year is so and so next year so and so how the storage requirement would be this year so and so next year so and so like that they have to understand everything in the requirement gathering time itself they have to understand everything in the requirement gathering time itself because because everything is attributed to what optimization fine tuning they have to resolve certain problem for that what they need they need background about all these information okay sizing related response time related concurrent user related transaction related growth related storage related every information performance engineer should have then only either they can avoid problem or they can identify the problem quickly okay avoid problem or identify the problem quickly that is a reason in the early stage when similar like like de developers what they will do developers they'll do the requirement gathering performance engineers also will do the requirement gathering that is what the first first layer okay in the first layer basically what they are doing they are doing the requirement gathering the requirement can be of any form that is the response time related concurrent user related business transaction related growth related storage related whatever that is what they are going to do it where in the requirement gathering phase so similarly next step what developers will do developers they'll do the architecture review architecture review similarly performance engineers also what their focus area architectural review basically they have to understand what what is actually happening whether you are you are you are touching your nose around your head or you are directly doing all your activity or you are unnecessarily routing through multiple system or your architecture is very very simple or whether your navigation is actually multiple pages or you are navigating very less so all these things what you are going to do you are going to do it in the architectural review understanding you are going to do it in the architectural review understand basic understanding okay system a talks to system b system b talks to system c or what or how the implementation is actually there can this be easily modified or what or this is actually going to create unnecessary overhead or what like that you need to ask a question get the understanding with respect to the architectural review okay so so that is where this concept of 
scale in scale out okay scale in scale out is actually comes into picture okay so horizontal scaling horizontal scaling vertical scaling okay, horizontal scaling vertical scaling okay say like i'll i'll uh, say um, so example i have one server i have one server the server configuration is what the server configuration is maybe i'll put it very low 4 gb ram okay Okay, just for example, because in mobile also nowadays everybody is actually having 8 GB and all, but for a, for an example purpose, I'm saying 4 GB RAM your system is actually having, and you are some performance issue people are reporting, they are reporting that there is a problem. So instead of straight away going and touching the source code, what you are doing, you are trying to do some kind of a low hanging, low hanging fruits. What is that? You are trying to increase the configuration of the machine. From 4 GB to 8 GB. 4 GB to 8 GB. Yes, we did it. We are getting some improvement, but still, still the complaint is actually there. And what we are doing, we are increasing the memory from 8 GB to 16 GB. 8 GB to 16 GB. Yes, there are also some improvement, and after which still the problem is there you are increasing from 16 gb to 32 gb okay this way of increasing the resource okay trying to resolve your problem right this way of increasing your resource and then trying to resolve the problem this is actually called as what this is actually Vertical scaling. Okay. Vertical scaling. Oh, did I write it differently? Sorry. Okay. This is actually what? So, <clears throat> so what we are saying, we are we are increasing the same configuration of the machine. We are increasing same configuration of the machine. instead of wording confusion i'll say scale up and scale out so that you can easily understand it okay scale up which is vertical scaling vertically you are increasing your uh, configuration say like at at certain point of time you cannot increase your configuration maybe your your chipset or your motherboard something is not supporting right something is not uh, supporting uh, in that case, what you can do, you reach up to 32, but you still wanted to do this kind of a activity means what people will do, they'll say they'll create a similar set of a machine and similar configuration machine. They put it under what load balancer. They'll put it under load balancer. Okay. So, so which means that either you are going to increase the configuration of the same machine okay you are going to increase the configuration of the same machine that is actually the vertical scaling or scale up okay you are increasing the configuration in the upside okay scale up and if at a certain point you are unable to increase your configuration but you can put one more machine and put it in the load balancer this is actually what horizontally you are increasing the configuration you are increasing the configuration 
horizontally that is actually called as what scale out you are you are you are scaling in the outward side okay so so either you are going to do the vertical scaling or horizontal scaling okay you are going to do the vertical scaling or horizontal scaling or scale up or scale out whatever you you call that as okay so so these are the things are bare minimum important concepts because that is where your your whether your architecture is actually uh, adaptive enough to do all these things or what if your your system itself is not having the capability you cannot do all these things so all these things are actually important factors to know when you are talking about architecture when you are talking about system when you are talking about microservices architecture all those things are actually important concepts to know so so horizontal scaling or scale out vertical scaling or scale up okay so that concept also sometimes people will ask like uh, what we can do you wanted to scale up the system or scale out the system so based on uh, the the system capacity you can either vertical scale it or horizontal scale it. okay that is the understand similarly say like your your system is like this okay example your your web page is like this this is your web page and your main content your main content is actually loading in this place and some uh, advertisements or some junk things that are loading here okay when you are loading your page this is actually loading first this is actually loading second and this is actually loading third okay what you can uh, you, what you can observe here guys anybody can comment on this the unnecessary things are loading first and the actual yeah. content is loading last very very good so those are the things you need to focus on right like what is actually required has to be coming first because you are engaging your end user if your unnecessary things are actually loading first and your your end users are disturbed by seeing those content that is not fair right that is not the way to engage your your end users okay so so all these things are actually comes into the 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 review of your architecture review of your system dependencies all those things you are going to do it in this layer in this layer you are going to do all these things basically you are going to understand yes whether the design is actually simple simple design and implementation or what or proper algorithm data structure is actually selected or what and and you should know your limitation first okay you should know your limitation i mean this is my architecture and there is a problem okay everywhere there there should be a problem and you should know that problem and you should document it so that in in future nobody co should come and say boss there is something missing that time what you can say boss this we know already and we documented it already so that also you need to do it as a practice okay what is your problem and that has to be documented because in future you should not get the surprises okay there is a problem yes we know it already say say like uh, today i am developing an application after 5 years or after 10 years whether i am having the provision to add some new capability into my application or what that and all discussed in the architectural review side only okay so those time itself we have to think about yes whether i can scale my system after 5 years or after system uh, after 10 years something can be newly added or what all those things we have to think through in the in the architectural review time itself okay so those are the things yes developers also will do that but performance engineers when they are doing that they are more focused on what optimization performance improvisation that is what their focus area right so so they should always think about yes this this architecture this is the way it is actually working will it affect the performance or what which is actually going to check uh, uh, disturb the stability or what like that they have to focus on that is a primary focus area that is a primary focus area so guys those who wanted to enroll for this course journey uh, this is kumar sir number 8019524278019524278 8019524278 is number so this is kumar sir number i pasted in the chat uh, and note it down and i'll copy paste the course content also in the chat you guys can take it 
ओके एनीथिंग रिलेटेड टू कोर्स कंटेंट कोर्स टाइमिंग फीस रिलेटेड एनीथिंग एनीथिंग दैट यू वांट टू डिस्कस यू कैन डिस्कस विद कुमार सर फॉर फॉर फर्दर इंफॉर्मेशन ओके दिस इज एक्चुअली अ वीकएंड डिसीजन ओके सैटरडे संडे अलोन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव द लर्निंग वीक डे हॉलीडे बिकॉज i mean we got the request that week day they are completely busy and they wanted to have uh, something in the weekend as well so yes this this session is uh, for the weekend learners saturday and sunday only we are going to have the session week day we are going to have all day uh, saturday one and a half hour sunday one and a half hour we are going to learn it okay so saturday one and a half hour sunday one and a half hour we are going to learn it basically this is 25 plus hours of session we are going to learn for this course journey 25 plus hours of session and all these sessions are actually recorded okay all these sessions are actually recorded uh, uh, say like some uh, some cases you are unable to attend the session no problem all these videos you are going to have it for the lifetime access you are going to have it for the lifetime access any number of times you can watch it and then you can come back you can ask your question we can discuss yes all all things we are going to do industry best practices we are going to discuss okay in industry what is actually happening we are going to discuss interview related questions we are going to discuss all all uh, uh, knowledge sharing things we are going to do it guys okay anyone who wanted to enroll for this course journey please reach out to kumar sir 8019952427 is number so uh, as i told you it is a weekend session okay saturday sunday alone we are going to learn it um, so already we started i mean i started the introduction part even i started life cycle part also so uh, probably from tomorrow uh, we are expecting the enrolled learners will be part of the group so those who wanted to uh, enroll for this course journey without missing any topic you wanted to continuously learn things so uh, please reach out to kumar sir for further information 801995242 is number any question guys still no actually uh, coming to the scenario of scaling up and scaling out in case if we have the option normally we do not have the option for both of them to be done provided if there is there a scenario arises and we have the option uh, we can both scale up and scale out so which one would be pre- would be prefer and in what does um and what are it is it based i mean i'm just yeah. saying that uh, in what is the, this decision based on okay so i i'll tell you the scenario you decide what is best okay so say like uh, there is a big billion day sale suddenly heavy users uh, they are coming uh, they are ordering everything that time my system should uh, uh, capable enough to handle that load okay so example uh, you think like a system is actually increased from uh, 4 gb to 8 gb 8 gb to 16 16 to 32 like that increased okay suddenly all users went out okay i need to go back to the original state original state is what 4 gb ram okay think about the other scenario i had 4 gb one machine when the user came in quickly 4 gb another machine 4 gb another machine 4 gb another machine came when every user went out i need to go back to the original state in this two example which is very easy to go back to the original state the 4gb one all the machines have a horizontal GB. scaling horizontal scaling right correct right you are able to understand that is the logic that is the logic so so where there is a need you are going to increase your configuration where there is no need you are going to downgrade your uh, configuration so in that case preferably you can go with horizontal scaling okay but it's all case to case right nobody will be prepared for such kind of a scenario in that case they wanted to increase the configuration in the single machine they'll prefer to go with vertical scaling okay but it is all case to case but majorly horizontal scaling you can i mean answer to your question you can take horizontal scaling okay yeah. thank you yeah sure yeah so uh, thanks for joining guys uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with you people i expect uh, we all will travel in this course journey to learn performance engineering concepts lot of uh, discussions lot of examples we'll learn so uh, with this we'll complete our session for today thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye